Hey everyone, and welcome to another episode of Psychology Myth Busting. In this episode, we'll be examining criminal profiling. Does it work? Can it be relied on for figuring out the perp in a criminal investigation? If you watch any episode of Criminal Minds or NCIS, we may be inclined to say yes. First, let us examine a real-life example of criminal profiling. The date is October 2002, and in the United States Northeast, panic has gripped the region. Over the course of 23 days, 10 innocent people have been outright murdered, while four others have been wounded in a series of shootings. One was shot while mowing their lawn, another reading a book on a city bench, another while leaving a store, and still another shot while standing in a restaurant parking lot. The shootings have been random, with victims being white, African American, adults, children, men and women alike. This terrifying reality has forced many people to stay indoors out of fear, and schools are going into lockdown across the area. As the shootings continued, criminal profilers took to the TV screens of America. Many put forth their own conjectures as to who the criminal might be. These profilers are often employed by authorities such as the FBI that employ profilers in about 1,000 cases per year. The Beltway Sniper case, as this incident came to be known, was a prime example where such profilers made their voice and reasoning heard on the issue. The general consensus among profilers is that the killer was probably a white male. Additionally, they speculated that the killer did not have children, and that they were not likely of military background as the bullets found at the scenes of the crimes were crude rather than accurate military bullets. Finally, they placed the age of the killer somewhere in their mid-twenties. Pretty impressive and specific, right? Well, the sniper was found captured on October 24th. The expert profilers were shocked when the police found that it was actually two people committing the shootings. A team of two African-American males, John Muhammad and Lee Malvo, were in fact guilty of the crimes. Contrary to predictions, Muhammad had four children and was a former soldier. Additionally, neither killed was in his mid-twenties. Muhammad was 41 and Malvo was 17. This case highlights a couple of big points. First being that the criminal profilers have become and remain a large element of our culture and society. Films such as Silence of the Lambs and at least nine other films have stoked interest in criminal profiling over the years. Additionally, many TV programs that have remained popular, such as CSI and Criminal Minds, rarely offer skepticism about profilers' abilities. Another statistic that reveals this widespread belief is that in a survey of 92 psychologists and psychiatrists with expertise in law, 86% agreed that criminal profiling is, quote, a useful tool for law enforcement, end quote. However, only 27 believed it was scientifically established enough to be admitted into courts of law. Additionally, as many as 58% of police officers polled believe profiling was helpful in directing investigations. Given these facts, it's important to examine whether or not these profilers are objectively a valuable asset to crime solving, or if they are a wishful fantasy propagated by pop culture. And that leads me to my second point. Does criminal profiling work? More specifically, does criminal profiling predict a perpetrator's characteristics better than chance? The answer is probably yes. Studies show that profilers can often accurately guess some of the characteristics of criminals when presented with detailed case file information regarding specific crimes than we would have if we, say, flipped a coin. However, these results aren't terribly impressive given that anyone who has access to data on the characteristics of criminals can also predict criminal characteristics. For example, about 90% of serial killers are male and 75% of them are white. You don't need a profiler to tell you that when you're facing a serial murder investigation, the perpetrator is likely a white male. In fact, in most studies, professional profilers hardly do better than untrained people who have access to the same information. In a meta-analysis of four well-controlled studies, it was revealed that trained profilers perform only slightly better than non-profilers. So why is this concept of a professional criminal profiler so popular? Having known quite a few people majoring in psychology who have cited criminal minds as a base motive for their career decision, it's sufficient to say that TV and movies probably play a huge role in perpetuating the myth. However, a couple heuristics, or mental shortcuts, play a big role in maintaining the myth. First, the expertise heuristic assumes that people who describe themselves as quote-unquote experts 
tend to earn our trust more than the average person might, and thus their role might seem more credible. Additionally, the P.T. Barnum effect also plays a role. The P.T. Barnum effect is the tendency to find vague and general personality descriptions believable. As a prime example of this, uh, I had a teacher from my clinical psychology course in college who had us draw self-portraits on a piece of paper and turn them in to have her analyze it over the weekend. The following Monday, she handed back to us a neat and tidy explanation as to why we drew what we drew. Many people in the class were floored on her accuracy, while others quietly discussed partial accuracies. Our professor revealed shortly after handing these back uh, that she pulled them from a personality descriptor generator and that they were completely random. People who were convinced that she had had them pegged from the start uh, with these descriptions got a bit quiet after she revealed this information. Similarly, you could view star signs or Chinese New Year animals in this manner, as they tend to predict overall personality attributes in a very general manner that oftentimes people will just run with. So, do profilers actually do better than the average person in solving crimes? Currently, the answer seems to be a resounding no. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.